Who tests you? Is it your boss or your coworkers? Who tests you? Is it your spouse or your kids? Who tests you? Is it you yourself? Is it your health, your shadow self, your fears and anxiety? Because we all endure tests in this life. And yet God is here to help us pass these tests with flying colors. So here we are on our first Sunday in Lent. Welcome. Now here's my pastor's test. What is Lent? What is the greatest commandment? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul. And love your neighbor as equally as you love yourself. The greatest commandment. And Lent is an individual and communal call to repentance, change, mourning, and to seek God with fasting and prayer and right worship to get closer to God. Now, many people have been asking me whether Ash Wednesday and Lent are Catholic, Roman Catholic practices. No. These are Christian practices that we are all encouraged to partake in. Because we are all a part of the Catholic, i.e. universal church in Christ. Now, the Roman Catholics are only in a denomination of the Holy Universal Christian Church, just like we Protestants, Presbyterians, are a part of the Universal Church. Christian Church. So some of the Lent history is that if we look at the Old Testament prophets, they called Israel to individual and corporate repentance and change, to change their heart and mind in order to get right with God. And it seemed that God was angry. We don't like angry God. We don't sometimes like to meditate on that. But God was angry with the whole community, and they were in trouble, so they sought to get right with God. Return to the Lord, because the Lord may come any minute like a thief in the night, when you're least expecting him to come up. And God is merciful and slow to anger, and abounding in love. So the Lord wants us to change and get closer to the Lord. Now, we as Christians are seeking to get closer to God this Lent as we journey through 40 days toward the celebration of Easter. We're already, what, three, four days into it? And on Ash Wednesday, we discuss the suggestions that you give up something, like sugar or chocolate, like I am, and then when you're struggling to get through it and not get into the temptation, that you get closer to God, you say a prayer, or you meditate, and that helps us to realize how dependent upon God we really are. And then you're also encouraged to add something, to add a devotional, maybe every day, or at least pray for three or four people, uh, that you can also read your scripture maybe 15 minutes a day, or maybe pray 15 minutes a day, or you pick up something else that helps you to get closer to God. And so we had talked about how different people can take up spiritual practices like meditating on God is love and saying it, praying it, and then sitting there in silence, seeking to experience God's love, that in silence we can be embraced by the Lord we may hear from the Lord in our inner spirit. We may just feel a sense of calm and love. But it is a great time to detach from the world and all of our responsibilities to just listen to the Lord. And then there are other ones that, you know, people can give up fear and anxiety. They can try and give it up in the way that they're going to be focusing on how to pray more when fear and anxiety show up. 